Hi everyone. Today I'm going to read you another story in the Ordinary People Change the World series. One of the reasons I love these books so much is because I want each one of you to know that you could change the world if you choose to. This one is called I Am Jane Goodall. It's about a woman who, when she was a little girl, loved animals so much. She was encouraged by her mom and dad, and she became one of the most important scientists and environmentalists and person who cared for animals that we know. I am Jane Goodall. On my first birthday, my father bought me a cuddly toy chimpanzee named Jubilee. I loved Jubilee. I mean it. Loved. Jubilee, meet Jane. I used to carry Jubilee with me everywhere. As I got older, when I'd line up all my toys and play teacher, Jubilee was the one who had his own chair. Okay, class. Now, who knows what rabbits like to eat? Yes, Jubilee? Correct, as always. <laughs> can tell Jubilee's her favorite. I didn't just love my toy ch chimpanzee, though. I loved all animals, even the earthworms I found in the garden. Did you bring the earthworms inside the house? Jane's mom said. Don't worry, mom. They're safe as can be right under my pillow. <laughs> my mom took the worms, said that the worms would be safer in the garden, so we took them outside and buried them back in their home. At five years old, I was curious to learn how chickens lay eggs, so I crawled into my grandmother's hen house to watch. At first, the hens were scared of me. Then I decided to crouch in the corner. If I had moved, the hens would have run away. I was patient, though. Finally, after all the hours of waiting, I saw what I was looking for. The hen gave a little wiggle and plop, there was an egg. It was my first research project. Where were you? You've been missing for such a long time. We sent out a search party, her mom said. You'll never believe where eggs come from, said Jane. In addition to animals, I love nature. I named the chestnut tree Nookie and the beech tree Beach. Beach was my favorite. Thank you, Beach, for letting me read up here. Oh, that was another thing. I loved reading. Back then, my family didn't have a lot of money. To get books, we went to the library. When I was seven years old, I got a book that would change my life. It was called The Story of Dr. Doolittle. I read it once, then I read it again, and then I read it a third time before it had to go back to the library. It was about a man who could talk to the animals. In the book, there's a parrot who says that if you want to learn how animals talk, you need the power of observation. Do you know what that means? But what I remember most is the part where Dr. Doolittle and his animal friends are being chased and they come to a cliff. How are we ever going to get across? A bridge, quick, make a bridge, says one of the monkeys. Right there, the monkeys joined hands and feet and they became the bridge. Isn't that beautiful? We can accomplish anything by working together. After reading that book, I vowed that I would go to Africa and live among the animals. By the time I was 12, I had my own nature group, the Alligator Club. My friends and I raised money to help old horses. We took nature walks and wrote down what we saw, or at least I did. 
And if you wanted to have a high rank in the club, you have to be able to recognize 10 dogs, 10 birds, 10 trees, and five butterflies. How about I go first, says Jane. <laughs> Something tells me she's gonna name them all perfectly, says one of the kids. Each of us even had our own animal name. Jane was the Red Admiral, named after a beautiful butterfly. Was I the best student? Not really. On school days, it was hard for me to wake up. I didn't like being indoors, but we were going outside or were around animals, that's when I'd get excited. Guess how many pets I had. There was a lizard with no legs named Evor and a guinea pigs named Gandhi and Jimmy, racing snails with numbers painted on the back, Pickles the cat, Hamlet the hamster. Oh, and that didn't include the dogs I looked after, like my favorite Rusty, who liked wearing pajamas and Peter the Canary. Never heard of someone having so many animals. I wanted a job where I could learn more about animals. But back then, if you were a girl, people didn't think you could become a scientist. They expected girls to become nurses or secretaries or teachers. But I wanted to go to Africa. I wanted to study animals. Luckily, my mom always told me, if you want something, work hard for it. If you don't give up, you'll find a way. I never forgot that. Soon, I had my chance. One of my school friends invited me to visit her family in Kenya. To pay for the trip, I worked as a waitress and I hid my money under the carpet. One day, I closed all the curtains and counted it, and I've got enough. I'm going to Africa. The trip took 21 days by boat. I was 23 years old. It all seemed like a dream until I saw a giraffe who stared directly at me. It had dark eyes and long lashes a black tongue, and was chewing acacia thorns. I knew my dream was coming alive. Finally, I was in the Africa of Dr. Doolittle. Two months later, my life changed again. Someone told me, if you're interested in animals, you must meet Dr. Lewis Leakey. Nice to meet you. I'm Jane Goodall. I hear you like animals. You have no idea. Dr. Leakey was an anthropologist, which means he studied how humans live and also a paleontologist, which means he studied fossils and bones. At first, he hired me as a secretary, but he was quickly impressed with what I knew about animals, including his own pets. Eventually, Dr. Leakey told me about a new job studying chimpanzees up close. He said going into the forest would be hard. It would be dangerous. But if we could find out how chimps live today, we'd learn more about how our own prehistoric ancestors used to live. I have no college degree, no training, and no experience, said Jane, but I want that job. Jane, I've been waiting to hear you say that. Said For a year, I read everything I could about chimpanzees. I also told that, I was also told that woman, a woman couldn't be alone in the forest. They said I needed a companion and a guide. My mom offered to come. I was ready. I knew you wouldn't give up, her mom said. I'll never forget the day, July 16th, 1960, 
the day I first set foot in what is today called the Gombe National Park in Tanzania, Africa. At 26 years old, I had finally made it to the home of the chimpanzee. It was a place that would change my life. During one of my first explorations, we saw two chimpanzees eating in a tall tree. They noticed us and ran away. The next day, we didn't see any chimpanzees. There were no chimps the day after that either. For months, I'd try to get close, but they kept running away. Then I started going alone, just me. I'd go to a high area called the peak and look down with my binoculars. That was my secret. Be patient. Learn about how they lived and slowly move closer and closer. In time, I saw that the chimpanzees would hang out in groups of six or fewer. The female chimps would be with the children and the male chimps would be with one another. These weren't mindless animals. This was a community. Still, it took nearly a year before I could get within 100 yards of chimpanzees. One day, I came back to camp and found out one of the male chimpanzees took our food, including your bananas. Fantastic, Jane said. That means they're not scared of me now. I bet he'll be back tomorrow. The next day I waited and waited. There were no chimpanzees in sight. Then at 4 p.m. I heard a rustling noise by my tent. It was a large male chimpanzee with a thick beard. David Graybeard, I named him. That was going to be his name. Back then, people told me there was a certain way to study animals that I shouldn't give the chimpanzees names. They said animals were supposed to have numbers, not names. Why? They thought animals didn't have personalities or emotions. They thought if we gave them names, we'd start pretending they were like us. But that's what no one realized. They were like us. That day, David Graybird took my nuts and my bananas. A month later, he took one from my hand. And even later, out in the forest, he slowly approached me and checked to see if I had a banana in my pocket. It was one of my proudest moments, having the other chimpanzees now understand that I wasn't a threat, a threat that I was their friend, and they were mine. Over time, by seeing the chimpanzees chimpanzees as individuals, I could truly understand them. Who wants another banana? David was calm, though he liked getting what he wanted. It's okay, pal, calm down. Goliath was easily excited. William was shy. And old Flo was a strong mother, always bringing her daughter and son. As I watched, I learned one of the coolest things of all. One day, I saw David Graybird stripping leaves from a twig, then sticking the twig into a termite mound. He wasn't just using the twig as a tool. He had made the tool. Before that, Scientists thought only humans could make tools. There was no doubt these animals were intelligent. Every night I'd write in my journal about what I'd observed, and every day I saw chim chimpanzees doing the same things we do. Holding hands, tickling, kissing, even, even patting backs to reassure one another. The more I observed, the more I learned. 
soon, I had so much information, I needed a tape recorder. Then I needed an assistant to help observe all the other chimpanzee families in the forest. Six years later, what started with a notepad and binoculars became a full research center. Now I was the one in charge. Isn't it wonderful, Jane said. Look what we can build together. Today, thanks to our work in Tanzania, the whole world knows that animals have their own personalities and complex relationships. In my life, people told me there were a certain way to do things, a certain way to study animals, and a certain way that girls should behave. They told me to follow the rules, but instead, I followed my gut. In your life, it will be easy to see how others are different from you. But there's so much more to gain if instead you see how alike we all are. All of us, all living things, share so much. We have so many things in common. When we realize that and look out for each other, that's the most beautiful way to live together. Today, Dr. Goodall's work has grown reminding people everywhere that we all share this earth every day. When we protect the planet, we protect each other. Even now, along with the Jane Goodall Institute, she's working to save endangered species, including her beloved chimpanzees, while also taking care of our environment. With more than 150,000 groups of young people in 130 countries, the Roots and Shoots Network connects youth of all ages who desire to create a better world. Give them a call. You can be an environmentalist too. Want to work with animals one day? Watch your favorite animals and see what they do. Make notes. Read books about them. They're so much like us. I am Jane Goodall. And I see so much that we have in common. Watch, observe, be patient. I'll teach you this. We don't own this earth. We share it. Listen to the feelings in your heart. We are responsible for the animals around us. We must take care of them. And when one of us is in trouble, be it human, creature, or nature itself, we must reach out and help. When we do, we build a bridge, a bridge that will carry all of us. Here's some pictures of Jane in real life. One of the her quote here at the back of the book says, you cannot get through a single day without having an impact on the world around you. What you do makes a difference and you have to decide what kind of difference you want to make. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I find Jane Goodall to be very inspiring on so many levels. I love that she knew at an early age what she wanted to do. And with the encouragement of her wonderful mother, who saw that Jane should follow her dreams and encouraged her to do so at a time when girls, as we learned in this story, weren't expected to do the things that Jane did. She was kind of a pioneer. What a wonderful person. And as I said, a great inspiration to all of us. If you're interested in learning more about her work and how children can be involved, 
look up roots and shoots. Maybe you'll find something interesting. Have a great day, everyone. I really hope you loved learning more about Dr. Jane Goodall. And that maybe there's a little inspiration in this story that you can follow a dream that you have. Make a difference. Have a great day, everyone.